Would you like to learn more about the interview process and the application process for tech jobs? In this video, I'm going to answer some common questions people ask me about applying and interviewing for tech jobs. My name is Michael Gibbs. I'm an enterprise architect with about 25 years experience, and I've spent more than two decades helping people just like you get your first tech job, get promoted in tech. And uh, I've been coaching others for two decades. And there's a lot of questions that people consistently ask me about interviews and applications. And in today's video, we're gonna cover these three questions. Why most people fail the interview? why the best tech jobs will have the hardest interview processes and that might be the best thing for you and what that actually means. And we'll talk about why the best tech jobs don't have an easy apply button even though people complain about it on LinkedIn all day. There is a reason for these things. And if you know these things, you'll be much more likely to get hired on your next interview. So the first question is why most people don't win the interview. Why do they fail the interview? And we're talking about most people. Because typically speaking, only a very small percentage of people get hired, typically 2 to 5% of the people that were ever interviewed. So why is this? So I've interviewed actually 6,000 people, and it all comes down to these reasons. Typically speaking, the first reason is competency. You must have the skills to be able to do the job. And if someone doesn't, I can't hire them. So let's say I'm interviewing someone to be a cloud architect or a security architect or an AI architect. If I ask them a very basic rudimentary question, like how does a host talk to a web server? And if so, what's necessary to secure that communication? If the person doesn't know how to answer, how does a host uh, attach to a web server? They'll never be able to design any kind of architecture that involves any kind of networking or compute because all that stuff has to occur. So a lot of times that uh, people just don't win the interview based upon competency. And I'm gonna tell you that happens most of the time. Now, the next thing that keeps us from hiring people is really where we feel we're being, dis being deceived or any kind of dishonesty or lies. And I'll tell you where this always comes from. What we do as hiring managers is we ask people questions, tell me about their resume, tell me about this thing that's covered on your resume. And unfortunately, I'm gonna say in about 90 to plus percent of the cases that I've interviewed, when I ask people about the things on their resume, they can't explain it. And if they can't explain what's on their resume, you can't hire the person because you can't hire someone you don't trust. So false advertising, lies, whatever you want to call it, you can't hire anyone that does, they can't explain what's on their resume. And now those first two knock out, I'd say 95% of all, re all resumes and all people that are interviewing. Now, beyond that, here's what we're looking for. We're typically looking for someone with an energetic, enthusiastic, passionate attitude, a great level of emotional intelligence, really strong communication skills, social skills, and interpersonal skills. And that, as well as attitude. So any of those things, if they're weak, will typically cause a person not to be hired. Because if someone's not passionate about the work, you don't want them on your team because they're never going to fight to be the best. If they don't have good social skills or emotional intelligence, they're going to cause conflict on their team, which is going to reduce the capability of your team. So you don't want that. If they don't communicate well, then you've got a problem because you're going to have communication errors, which are going to cause problems later, which is another reason why you typically can't hire for those. So those are the reasons why people fail the interview. Typically speaking, lack of job competency. It's typically related to people being putting things on the resume they can't explain and not having the correct attitude or soft skills to be hired. And I guess the last component is the person that just can't show their value. They just can't show the hiring manager what's in it for the company to hire them. And that's going to be really critical in any interview to show what's in it for you to hire me. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is why the best jobs have so many interviews. Now, when I want you to understand whenever we're talking about building an elite team, building the best of the best, which is what the best companies have done, which is why typically they're most successful, the best sports teams do, the, spe the special forces, the best of them, what do they do? They have to be very selective. They have to have the people and find the people that won't quit no matter how hard it gets. And they want people that want it so bad They'll do what it takes to get there. So when you find a company like that, the best companies are going to do a lot of interviews. So 
on these interviews, they're going to be a little different. They're not going to be a basic interview. They're going to ask you real questions that are going to be understanding of your knowledge, your ability to evaluate trade-offs, the ability to assess your deep thinking, and the ability to assess your judgment. So those are things that most people can't answer, and they can't fake their way through. So that's going to be part of the reason some of these jobs are going to be interviews are going to be harder, but there's going to be a lot more of them. Now, realistically speaking, jobs with the hardest interview process, and this has been measured by candidate ratings, tend to have the highest employee satisfaction, and the employees tend to stay in these companies longer because in this long interview process, you have a chance to make sure the person is a good fit. Now, a Glassdoor study found that for every 10% increase in interview difficulty, they got a 2.6% increase in employee satisfaction. That means employees stay there longer, contribute longer. And here's the reason. By the time they've successfully vetted someone to be part of the company, they know that they're a good fit in the company. So companies do this, but also in the process, they weed out all the people that say, I'm going to quit after the fourth interview. I'm going to quit on the third interview. I'm going to quit on the sixth. And I ask you, if you were the CEO of a big team, would you want people that'll fight so hard to join your team? Or do you want people that are going to quit when it gets a little tough? That's why the best jobs will have 10, 15 interviews. Now, people often ask why the best tech jobs don't have an easy apply button. In fact, you see people complaining all day. Can't this company just take the information from my resume and put it in their application? Of course they can, but there's a reason they're not to. So, they're doing it because they want to screen out weaker candidates or candidates that won't go through the effort. In fact, uh, from, in Harvard Business Review, there was a study of why your job application was rejected. And one of the things they tend to do is they companies like to screen out what they call low-effort candidates or identify those who have a degree of attention to detail or those that do not. So if you have to fill out an application and you make mistakes on the application, you've shown that you have no attention to detail. And in reality, if you have no attention to detail on your application, the concern is you won't have any attention to detail about your job. So one is for you to prove that you actually have a degree of attention to detail and you're actually going to do the work. Now, as it turned out, uh, Job Byte in 2023 also did some other things, and they said that applications submitted via an easy apply button, like a LinkedIn one clip, result in 66% less conversion rates, meaning 66% less likely to get hired those people that do the easy button. And here's the why. The people that do the easy button, the jobs that have the easy button, get a whole lot more people. But now the company has to weed through a whole lot more people that they wouldn't be hiring in the first place. So that's another reason why companies don't want that easy apply because they want to screen you out at the application process, not in the not in terms of taking time of hiring managers and others. And uh, realistically speaking, if you look at it, over 80% of applicants that used a one-click apply never tailored their resume for the job in the first place, so they're not showing themselves at their best for the job anyway. So this is the kind of thing where if you really think about it, they're making it easier for you to get hired when they have these harder application processes because your competition is typically cut in half. Half of the people won't go to the work. So do the work. Make the beautiful application. Put some love and attention to detail into that. And you will stand out because most people won't. And most people will make errors, which will preclude them from being hired in the first place. So in this video, we discussed three common questions people ask me every single day. Why people fail the interview. Why harder interviews uh, correlate with both higher quality hires and better jobs that you're going to like and be more satisfied in, which is, again, a good thing. And we talked about why the best jobs don't have an easy apply button. So that's what we talked about in this video. Now, if your goal is to become a cloud architect, a solutions architect, an AI architect, a security architect, or any other kind of architect, please join me on an architecture webinar. We run one webinar per week. We will talk about what we do in this position, uh, the skills that you will need for the various architecture roles that you desire. We will talk about how to bypass HR so you can get hired uh, when you lack experience. And then we will answer your questions about any kind of cloud architect, enterprise architect, security architect, AI architect career, or other careers live and free on Zoom in these webinars. The link to register for the webinar is in the description of this video. 
If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your IT architecture career, whether that be cloud architecture, AI architecture, security architecture, enterprise architecture, network architecture. I hope to see you on uh, this video, on another video, or another webinar coming soon. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you another day. Take care. Bye.